Rogers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike Podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? I'm doing okay. Doing okay. Had a little bit of a break here. Yeah, I've been sick. Um, ear infection? Like, yeah. Yeah. I, I actually almost... Uh, I learned a lesson this morning because I'm not quite over it. Because I, yeah. I, so my original antibiotic didn't work, um, and I have a bunch of antibiotic allergies. So slim pickings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we went from one that's really strong that wasn't doing anything to one that's really weak that I'm still taking. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it like the first one was one a day for seven days, and is this the one that four you days do? in I'm not. Like it wasn't doing anything. Yeah. And so now we switched to a four day for 10 days. <laughs> I'm like, Oh my God. So is this the one um, that still has like side effects for you or whatever, but it's like, yeah, we're willing to accept that. <laughs> not exactly. So, um, I have this class of antibiotics on my list of allergies, Yeah. but, uh, the doctor told me that, that the side effect that I had from the one that made me put it on my allergies list. Yeah is a side effect, but not an allergic reaction. Mm. Um, so she said, it may be that you're not actually allergic to this class of antibiotics, but we can't give you that one yeah. um, because of the, the effect that it has. Uh, so let's try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let, let's try and give you another one in that class and, and let me know if there's a problem. There hadn't been a problem. So. Yeah. Well, good. Yeah. So I, I guess we, I just when you were telling me that story originally, it sounded like this is a chance we're willing to take. Yeah, I mean, it, she had she got buy in from me. It's not like yeah, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm just saying I, I was in agreement with the decision. It's not yeah. you know I, I so um, the 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 drug originally like gave me really terrible abdominal pains. Oh really? Like the the one that I had listed on the on my allergies. Yeah. Um. And when I mean terrible abdominal pains, I mean like doubled over, can't straighten out in the emergency room kind of abdominal pains. Yeah. Um, so, but that's not a, that's not an allergic reaction. It's not like I was like most of those drugs on that list of allergies. Yeah. I like break out in hives or, yeah. you know, my throat closes up or my tongue swells or something. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I can't take kind penicillin of because of yeah. the hives. Yeah. Yeah. So. That, that's on my list too. Like all those psyllin drugs I can't take. No. Yeah. Anyway. So, um, but I, I have survived a week of this drug, so I, th- I guess I'm okay. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, three, three more days. Yeah. Three more days. And you're feeling better. We're and podcasting. I'm finally so. feeling better. Although I did, um, I did almost fall over in the shower this morning. Uh, so, <laughs> so my, yeah, um, like I said, ear infection, so my balance is still a little off. Like, I learned, um, don't close your eyes and raise your head. <laughs> oh, is that right? <laughs> yeah, I was washing my hair, you know. So I'm like, yeah. yeah, close yeah. my eyes, lean my head back, and then I, I, oh. I fell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you actually go down? Uh, near. I mean, I went against the wall. Okay. Like I, I, yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know. We're, we're at the age we're falling in the shower is it uh, can be <laughs> I serious. <know. laughs> I know, I know. And I like I, I did hurt my like I, I had back spasm. Oh at, yeah. At that point too. So yeah. So now my like my back's sore, but that'll that'll work itself out in a day or two. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just keep so. stretching and it'll it'll be fine. There you go. So So yeah, good times. Yeah. I had a drink for the first time in a week and a half last night. Oh yeah. Yeah. Last night I was finally like, you know what? I'm, I really <laughs> want to drink. I'm going to have, I'm going to have a glass of whiskey. So I got some OGD, yeah. um, bottled in bond, had, nice. had a glass. Of, it was, it tasted really hot to me oh, having yeah. not had a drink in a week and a half. <laughs> right. Like I really tasted the alcohol that time. Usually it's not that strong. Yeah. And, and yeah. Oh well. Oh well. So what do you want to talk about? We've missed so much. <laughs> yeah. We're kind of, we're kind of behind on the times here. Um, yeah. Um, well, I mean, we may as well start patting ourselves on the back. Yeah. Uh, I always enjoy that. Yeah. Um, now of course it's not definitive, but Seymour Hirsch put out that article, uh, explaining how the United States blew up the Nord Stream pipelines. Yeah. Um, still seem to be some problems with it. And I, I've read some analyses of his article that like, you know, the, the basic construct seems to be correct. Um, some of the details are off. Yeah. Uh, What's been more interesting, though, I think, 
is the reaction to the article. Yeah. Um, I did get a kick out of, uh, I'm pretty sure it was Jake Sullivan, um, who, when asked about the article, um, said, uh, yeah, we don't, we're not going to talk about that. It's just propaganda. So I'm not answering any questions. Yeah. Right. We, we don't entertain ridiculous <laughs> assertions like that. Yeah. So, um, Seymour Hersh has become persona non grata again. Oh yeah. All right. Uh, just like when he said the, the, um, Russian, um, collusion thing was ridiculous. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not the first time that he's been, um, been kind of tossed out of mainstream, but the, the man's made his entire career exposing government corruption. Yeah. 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 Um, and uh, criminality. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, this guy is responsible for, um, uncovering the, uh, Malay massacre in Vietnam, um, the, uh, abuses in Abu, Abu Ghraib, um, CIA spying on Americans in the sixties and seventies. Um, like <laughs> the list goes on he's, yeah. and he's been, uh, like they've denied what he said was done in every case. And then it always comes out it to be, out yeah, to be in the, at the end of the day when it, when the truth really comes out. Um, so, and I, I, you know, like I said, I don't know it's anonymous sources, which I'm, I'm certainly, uh, skeptical of. Yeah. Um, but, but he's been he, a reporter a long time. I would yeah. imagine he's got connections and yeah. And part of the reason he does is because he's been really good at not exposing his sources. Yeah. Yeah. Um, people feel confident leaking information to him. Yeah. And, um, uh, you know, he's just, uh, he's, he's proven to be correct too much. Yeah. Um, I, I it's, there's absolutely reason to believe that he knows the right people, that people are confident leaking information to him. Um, and, uh, he, mostly that he's just, that he has, um, that he's accumulated these kind of sources over the years. Yeah. And, uh, he, he seems to be a guy who has, um, pretty strong journalistic integrity. Yeah. So, and he's well, independent now. So, yeah. uh, but the, the other thing is that like beyond just the uh, attacks on, um, Seymour Hersh yeah. that have occurred since then, uh, mostly the media has just not talked about this. Yeah. <laughs> Because the media is in the pocket of the government, and the government isn't happy that this is being put out, which yeah. is is insane to me. Because I mean, you've got the the clips of Biden and and Republicans and Democrats on both mm -hmm. sides talking about how Nord Stream's got to go. Like, yeah. and there's Victoria Newland. Yeah, mm -hmm. like so. It's not like like it's so we had we've been talking about taking this pipe not in, not in, in those specific terms, mm -hmm. but about doing away with this pipeline for years now, as far as I can tell. And when we, when it actually happens and it's gets done, it's like the government steps in and is like, Oh, you can't believe we'd actually do something like this. Mm -hmm. When we've literally been telling you for years, we're, we're gonna going do to do something like, yeah, we're yeah. going to do something like this. But then when it's actually done, we can't entertain the idea that we did it. Yeah. It seems insane to me. Uh, yeah, I agree. And, and then even afterwards, um, you had, uh, uh, you had people in the government talking about, um, well, oh gosh, what's our, uh, not Jake Sullivan, the other guy, um, uh, Anthony Blinken well, yeah. and Anthony Blinken saying, um, well, this is a great opportunity for us. Yeah. Uh, you had Newland again, um, speaking before Congress saying that she, uh, was happy that it was, um, a hunk of metal at the bottom of the ocean now. I, yeah. I don't know. I, from the very beginning, we said the most likely culprit was the U S they stood yeah. to gain the most. Uh, I think the thing that, that probably stands out the most in this is the, um, uh, at least according to his article is the, uh, Norway's participation. Oh yeah. Because we didn't speculate on Norway's participation. I mean, we talked yeah. about Poland, we talked about the UK. Yeah. Um, but, I, I think we did mention that there was a new pipeline that had opened up the same day from Norway into the mainland Europe. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, but the... It makes sense. Yeah. yeah, so they they got to pick up the slack immediately. Yeah. Um, and now with the knowledge that that it couldn't be replaced. Yeah, that's permanent. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, it also didn't make sense that Russia would do it besides the fact that like just destroying their own stuff doesn't make any sense when they had already turned off the tap. Yeah. Um, but, uh, soon afterward they were already taking, um, um, or doing estimates on repairs. Yeah. Like, why would you blow your own thing up and then... And then start, like, is it repairable? Like, let's <laughs> yeah, go see if it's no. repairable. Like, yeah. You know, it seems to me if they had done it themselves, they would assume they did it right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I yeah, don't know. Yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> there would be no intent on repairing it at that point. Yeah, why, exactly. Why spend the money to build it, spend the money to blow it up, and then spend the money to rebuild it? That's, yeah, right. That, like, well, although that is definitely some government thinking. Right oh, there. yeah, yeah. That's our government thinking <laughs> right there. Like, <laughs> Make work. Yep. Um, so, uh, anyway, the, the article was interesting and it was very detailed. I mean, there's like some of the, uh, the arguments about it are, well, he says that this ship was out in the Baltic at this time, but the records say that it was in port. Yeah. Well, of course the records, the whole thing was a covert. Op, it was a covert right? mission. <laughs> like yeah. why in the yeah. world would they say, yeah. would it, we- would you be able to track it down that easily? Right. Yeah, so, absolutely. Um, got to have that plausible deniability. Right. Uh, but uh, you know, I, it, it's not to say that he's right, it, but it makes sense. Yeah. I it, mean, cause we, well, we said that from the beginning, like, I mean, this, yeah. Yeah. And if you go to like uh, moon of Alabama, who was an intelligence officer, um, and so moon of Alabama.org highly recommend. Um, uh, but he was saying at the time, um, based on, public sources, like essentially public intelligence sources, newspapers and um, uh, military reports and so on, which he made a career assessing as far as I know, um, essentially outlined the same thing that Seymour Hersh said in this article as the most likely way that this would have happened. Yeah. So it just fits. Yeah. It just fits. It's well, not definitive, but it fits. Yeah. And it, it just want to kind of stress the the level of like whenever I this came, the news initially came out with this, like mm-hmm. like I legitimately got concerned because uh, us doing something like this is a big deal. Like yeah. it's it's been a few months now, so it's not as fresh in people's minds, but like just understand like us bombing or destroying another country's pipeline. A like, NATO ally. NATO allies pipeline. Yeah. Like this is this is serious stuff. Mm-hmm. Like this doesn't this isn't something that can just be brushed under the rug and forgotten about. Well, apparently it can. Well, it's trying to be, but I'm I mean, you know, like I do, like this mm-hmm. is I mean, this is like World War Three, like Yeah. You know. Well, it certainly should um make some countries like Germany <laughs> reassess the alliance. Oh, absolutely. Um, because Germany's suffering because of this. Yeah. Yeah. And even if the people that are in power now won't recognize the significance here, mm-hmm. and maybe they do, maybe they don't, they will when it starts hitting them in the ballot box. Yeah. And when the people of the country start kind of standing up and being like, hey, we don't, we're not going to put up with this. Like, yeah. Like we need, we need heat. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's another one of the things that re- recently Bernard said at the moon of Alabama, yeah. um, is that, uh, while the government is taking one approach to this, like the people are taking a different one. Exactly. Like the people of Germany understand. Yeah. Um, and at some point there will be elections to replace those people that are in power now. And, like I said, people who are in power now may be friendly to us, but mm-hmm. may not be that way forever. Yeah. Well, and I think that there's um, there's a real pushback against Olaf Scholz. I think that um, I think that he is, and I think that the people of Germany see him as a cuck. Yeah. Really. Yeah. I mean, just yeah. that he he just kind of goes along with whatever. Yeah. The international pressure on him is not what his people yeah. want. Well, he won't. Um, stay not that what's way. best for Germany. Yeah, he won't yeah. stand up for them. Yeah. So, um, I mean, we'll see what happens with this. Uh, I guess the other thing that's probably worth pointing out there is that, um, at least according to the, the article, uh, the planning, um, like they started planning to destroy the pipeline in December of 2021. Really? Yeah. Um, so like before the war even started. I mean, that would jive up with some things that Biden said 
kind of, you know, during that same kind of time period. Yeah. Because he was, he was, I, I wish we had the clip of it where he was talking about how, you know, I don't know, something may happen to it, you know. I forget mm-hmm. exactly his phrasing on it, but he was very, I mean, very honest and direct about, you know, we may just go blow it up. Yeah, like, he, he was like, oh, yeah, there's things we can do. Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. exactly. And you and at the time, you kind of blow it off as, you know, Biden just kind of talking. But now, you, in retrospect, you kind of have to wonder, well, I mean, I'm sure he was getting briefings on all of this, you know. Yeah. So. <laughs> Didn't have sense enough to keep his mouth shut. Although, yeah. um the uh, the article suggests that uh, him talking about it out loud allowed them to switch it from a an intelligence operation to a military operation, and therefore not have to brief Congress on what they were doing. Oh, interesting. I, that doesn't really make sense to me because there's oversight. I mean, as much as there, yeah. as much as there is oversight of the intelligence agency, there's oversight of the military as well. I don't think yeah. that there's really much oversight of either. Yeah. When it comes, I mean, in Sure, yeah, de but jure, but at, at the same time, though, I mean, Congress has been pretty open to what we've done here anyway. It's yeah. not like there's a whole bunch of pushback in Congress, like, oh, we can't blow this thing up, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and this is only tangentially related, but I, like, I just keep seeing online um, people uh, attacking Russians. Um, like, okay, so I just remember this exchange uh, from a few days ago. The, um, in a chat that where somebody was saying, well, you know, I, uh, I just, you know, I can't stand the Russians now. And, um, and somebody replying like, how, I mean, the Russians aren't necessarily on board with this. Like, yeah, you, you can't lump all the Russians together. And, and the guy's like, well, there's plenty of them that are I'm like, yeah, but there's plenty of them that aren't also. And like, yeah. just think how, how you can apply this in the long term. Like, like how racist is that when it comes down to it? Like, you yeah. know, this is a way of justifying racism as well. Well, not, they're not all like that, but enough of them. Uh, yeah, yeah. Enough of them are that I can just hate them all. Yeah. Um, but the thing that, I mean, the whole exchange was so ridiculous and disappointing anyway. But what I kept thinking about was I wish people were as critical of U.S. militarism as they've been of Russian militarism here. Oh, man, we'd live in a different country. Oh, yeah. I mean, we would. Yeah, absolutely. I, it, it's, you know, <laughs> it, it's funny when you're listening to, it, it's kind of darkly funny, um, when you're listening to U.S. officials stand up there and say, uh, we cannot permit a country to just invade another country. <laughs> Yeah. You mean like well, I mean, we they, did in they, they, Iraq I was going to say, I mean, and, Russia permitted us to invade all of these other countries. Yeah. Iraq, well, Afghanistan, Syria, yeah. Somalia. I yeah. This list goes on and on. And then, of course, there's also the, the uh, well, they don't have to worry about NATO. NATO's a defensive alliance. Well, you know, ask Gaddafi about that. Yeah. Oh, wait. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, or... um. Yugoslavia, like that was a NATO war too. That was an invasion into a, a civil war. Yeah. Um, so NATO hasn't been a purely defensive alliance. It's absolutely not. Yeah. So there's definitely reason to be concerned. Um, and but it's the same kind of thing here. Well, you know, the Russians just uh, aggressively attacked this country, and and Ukraine didn't invade Russia. Well, yeah. Kind this of. is. No, I mean, that's true. Yeah. But, like I said, I just wish people were as critical of the American militarism as they've been of the Russian militarism. I, I wish they had a little bit of self-reflection in this. Yeah. And said, yeah, you know what? Our country's doing this stuff, too. And I don't like it here. Yeah. I don't like it there, either. Yeah. Like, so, I'm opposed to the wars all the way around, no matter who's starting them. Yeah, right. Um, But you can't be on board with... uh with U S invasions of middle Eastern countries or, or North African countries or whatever else and be opposed to Russian invasion of their neighbor. Yeah. Um, provoked invasion because this, it was at, I mean, we were absolutely, that's provoked. not the talking point. You got it all wrong. <laughs> completely backwards. It's unprovoked, the unprovoked invasion. Yeah. Like the, the yeah. world began on February 24th, 2022. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's the other thing too. Uh, and it, 
as we keep saying, it doesn't justify the invasion, but it's not without reason. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And it could have been avoided, and they didn't want to avoid it. Like, I mean, I think the Russians did want to avoid it. I think the West did not want to avoid it. Yeah. Um, because this could have been stopped beforehand. It, it's not like it was a, a surprise. I mean, it was kind yeah. of a surprise. I didn't actually think that he would invade. Yeah. Um, but... You know, the U.S. had been saying that Russia was going to invade any day now for like months before it actually happened. Yeah. But Putin had been saying for eight years, yeah. actually longer than that, he started saying in 2008 yeah. that Ukraine cannot become a member of NATO. Ukraine cannot be home for NATO weapons or military uh you know, um, equipment or personnel. Yeah. Um, this is a red line for us. This cannot be permitted. We can't allow you to do this. We will have to react. You yeah. will force us to react. He kept saying the same thing over and over and over and over again. And we just kept pushing. Yeah. And yeah. finally he did. Yeah. Right. And, and I've actually heard suggestions that the, this information about the Nord Stream, um, may have been leaked in order to provoke a reaction again. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's the case. I think that the U.S. would want to keep that under wraps. Yeah. Um, but, I yeah. mean, but it's because possible. It, because it definitely... <laughs> that's some serious 4D chess stuff going on, but... It, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, it, it's a problem for the U.S. beyond just Russia. Yeah. Because it, I mean, for Germany and, and just any other countries we do business with, that we will completely undermine your business with other countries <laughs> yeah. in the military way, like... Mm -hmm. Not that, you know, we're above doing that anyway, but it puts it way more out in the open. Yeah. Um, you want to do uh, some State of the Union stuff, or you sure. want to go to balloons, or what do you want to, <laughs> what do you want to talk I mean, about? We got a lot of directions to go, man. Yeah. Um, we may as well hit some State of the Union stuff. I actually pulled a whole bunch of clips, but I don't want to play them all. Yeah. Uh, I, I can summarize the State of the Union with this. I actually yeah. sat down and watched this whole thing. I also pulled like 15 minutes of audio and then I cut it down to like three minutes or something. I think that we'll probably only play like a minute and a half, maybe. Yeah. Roughly. <laughs> yeah. I, I can just describe the rest of it. We don't have to play it because yeah. it's hard to listen to him. It and is. I, I've already had to listen to it three times, obviously, so I don't <laughs> I don't yeah. really want to listen to it again. I don't blame you. Um, but I can sum it up with uh, the the summary of the State of the Union was everything is great. Government can fix everything. Uh, we just got to finish the job. Yeah. And he's not joking. No, he's not joking. <laughs> um, but, you know, there were some things that were in there that just kind of blew my mind. And I, I, I guess probably people get bored listening to us point out the hypocrisy. But sometimes they're it's, in back-to-back -back sentences. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and it's hard to ignore. Um, there... So let me start with some of the economic stuff. Like the economic stuff was just so um, manipulated the way it was presented. Um, he's talking about uh, inflation's gone down for a couple of months in a row. Well, no. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, the way it sounds is like, oh, well, you know, the prices are going down. Yeah, because no, no, no. I was so I'm screaming at the TV during this part because yeah. I'm like, I'm like, no, that's <laughs> just not true. Go to the grocery store. Yeah. Like, just because the prices aren't still going up doesn't mean inflation has came down. Yeah, like no, these. no, it's it's not going up at the same rate that yeah. it was. The yeah. the rate of inflation has gone down, but it still costs more yeah. every month. Yeah. The prices didn't go back down with that. Like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, so, so frustrating. Yeah, it, it kind of amazing some of those things that he says. Like, are you proud of that, really? Yeah. Um, instead of 10% inflation, it's uh, it's only 7%, but this is, it's cumulative. Yeah. So this is one in particular where politicians a lot of times can get away with, with bragging on something and the people just not quite understanding it enough yeah. that they just kind of take it, you know, that, mm -hmm. oh yeah, no, that is good news. Yeah. But in this situation, or, you know, gas prices are, are, uh, way down from where they were at their height. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but they're still higher than they were before. I mean, exactly. I, you know, it's but not. yeah. And. But this one in particular is one I think people see through pretty quick because you can go to the grocery store and figure out what you're paying. Like, yeah. I mean, people are, this is, this hits the pocketbook hard. 
Um, and, and you can't just like gloss over that. That's not one that people are going to be like, oh, well, you know, whatever. Like, mm-hmm. no, they notice that. It's a big deal. Yeah. Um, they're, uh, and then like kind of along that same line, um, he was talking about drug pricing and he uh, went off on this thing about insulin. Yeah. How expensive insulin is, how it only takes $10 to manufacture, gave it another couple of dollars for packaging. Say you're $13 for, um, for, you know, uh, manufactured and packaged and they're selling it for hundreds of dollars Yeah. and this can't be. Uh, tolerated and we are passing legislation to bring down the cost of insulin to $35. Drug companies will still play, make plenty of money, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, this is um, one I bet libertarians are screaming at the television about <laughs> because yeah. the reason, the whole reason we're in that situation is because you have more or less a monopoly on the drugs. Yeah. Um, the FDA has approved, I believe, three companies Yeah, to yeah. manufacture insulin in the U.S. Yeah. Um, and then, so then like 15 minutes later, he was talking about something unrelated, um, but he was talking about, uh, he's talking about capitalism. He says, capitalism without competition is exploitation. Yeah. And um, yeah, I was like, okay, you're right. But your problem with the insulin issue that you brought up 15 minutes ago. That you're uh, going to get the government more involved in, by the way. Yeah. is that Because that have, always works. <laughs> you're right. Um, is that you have limited the competition. Yeah. Like you want to solve the problem, um, you you need less legislation, not more. Yeah. You need to allow more companies to get into this market and compete. Absolutely. Because if they're charging so much more than they're spending to do it, I promise you more companies want in on that. Oh, absolutely. And it'll drive the prices down. Yeah, absolutely. Just think if we only had one car company. Yeah. What what would a car cost then like yeah i don't know (laughs) there's no if there was no competition they could just charge whatever they want yeah and then on top of that the reason you only have one car company is because the government's like no 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 we can't have everybody producing cars we gotta Mm -hmm. let ford produce the cars yeah um we have confidence in ford we tested their cars and they came out good exactly take our word for it (laughs) right um and he does uh Okay, so moving on to the next little bit that stood right. out to me. Um, he's talking about COVID a little bit. Yeah. And um, he says, uh, soon uh, we'll end the public health emergency. Like, well, <laughs> uh, why the, soon? Have, why not now? <laughs> you have you know? been to the grocery store lately? It looks pretty over to me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. I, so it, it's one of those things that you're like, who decides? This? He does. He just said it uh, himself. I guess so. <laughs> He's going to make a declaration a yeah. couple of months from now, and a, it'll all be over. Yeah, in May. Like, we have planned to end the public health emergency in May. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, great. Yeah. I, I guess. I mean, but it's just that they, they want to hang on to those emergency powers just a little bit longer. They want to have that leverage to do some legislation that they wouldn't otherwise be able to do under um, under normal circumstances. They want to yep. hang on to that, you know, emergency it's, it's status. power grab, yeah. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, there was a thing on sovereignty kind of towards the end. We can just skip that. I, I don't think he was talking about how, well, uh, okay. I may as well talk about it. So he talks about, um, abortion and how, uh, we've got to, um, we've got to, uh, make Roe v. Wade national again. Um, have everybody, all the states have to, allow abortions and, um, it, and we're not going to allow the kind of authoritarianism. Like if anybody, um, wants to do a nationwide abortion ban, then I'm going to veto it. And I'm like, good. Yeah. You know, I don't think that there should be a nationwide abortion ban. Yeah. I also don't think that it should be enforced nationwide either. Yeah. Like that abortion should be legal nationwide. This is, this if this is, is the, not what the states want. I mean, the whole point of having all these states was supposed to be that they can have different systems. Yeah. Um, their own kind of own it's, sovereignty. It's a it's a government, it's best when government's at home issue. Right. I mean, regardless of where you fall on it, the people who live in an area should be able to choose how they want to, because it's a tough issue. Like, it's yeah. not like this is a cut and dry issue. And there's good people on both sides. Yeah, very fine people. <laughs> very fine people on both sides. Yeah. So let let the people decide for themselves where they live. Yeah. Um, there are good faith arguments on both sides of the abortion issue. And, and I'm one of those people that I don't approve of it, but I don't want laws about it. Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, by default, I think it should be legal because I don't want a whole bunch of attorneys deciding on medical issues. Yeah. And, for and everybody. I, yeah. And and I agree wholeheartedly with that. Like, yeah. I mean. Um, and th- so, but then like a couple of minutes later, he's talking about the Ukraine war and how, you know, America has stood up for sovereignty and democracy and people's right to choose. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, like, how do we decide when to apply these things? Yeah. And, and obviously the answer is that like, uh, sovereignty and democracy are great as long as people are making the decisions that we want them to make. And when they don't make the decisions that we want them to make, then we don't believe in sovereignty and democracy. Then there, then there's too many people listening to misinformation. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> All fallen prey to the propaganda. Exactly. Um, like us. The wrong propaganda. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So yeah. I have been reading the Noam Chomsky and whoever his, um, co-author was the book, uh, manufactured consent oh, about yeah. the propaganda in the media. Yeah. Um, of course, and this was written in the late eighties, I guess, early nineties. Yeah. Um, I would say it's a must read, but it's dense. <laughs> like yeah. it is not a must read for everybody. You gotta, yeah. uh, if you enjoy technical manuals, you'll probably enjoy this one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it is, it is interesting yeah. and it is interesting to see how these same techniques continue to be applied. Yeah. Um, and, uh, particularly in light of like the Ukraine war. Um, cause most of the, or at least the first half of the book, they're talking about the, um, the way elections are handled, uh, or the way the elections are covered by, um, when it's a U.S. client state or when it's a, um, a, a, uh, enemy is not the right word. What, what's the word that they keep using for China and Russia before? Um, uh, it wasn't an enemy. It was a, um, uh, I don't know. It's on the tip of my tongue. I can't pull yeah. it. I don't know. Anyway, um, a, a nation that we have disagreements with. Yeah. We'll just say. Yeah. Um, and so they're looking at, uh, 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 Nicaragua, Guatemala, and El Salvador in the eighties. Yeah. And how, um, you know, the same kinds of things were happening in all of these countries, but we were on the side of the, the U S was on the side of the government in El Salvador and, um, and Guatemala and, uh, was against the Sandinista government in Nicaragua. Yeah. And they <clears throat> highlight how very differently elections in these countries were talked about. So, um, the things that they use to, um, to legitimize the election in the countries of the client states that we like that were, you know, essentially American puppets, um, was, you know, voter turnout and, um, and things like this. And, um, and, you know, uh, opposition participation in the elections and, and so forth. And then those things were better in the, in Nicaragua where we didn't agree with the government, where we weren't on the side of the government, where we were actually supporting the, the rebels that were, <laughs> you know, in, involved there. Yeah. Um, the moderate and, rebels. And so like there was better participation and it wasn't legally enforced like it was in the other two countries. Um, and it wasn't tracked. It was like a truly, uh, um, anonymous, uh, election process where it wasn't in El Salvador, certainly in their reasons to believe it wasn't in Guatemala either. Um, but it really seemed to be in Nicaragua according, uh, you know, according to independent observers, but, um, you know, the U S media, uh, looked at it as that, you know, the participation that was in Nicaragua was because of coercion, but the participation in El, in El Salvador and in, uh, in Guatemala was because the people were excited about the government <laughs> and like, you know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just, it's really funny. Like they, and they depersonalize, um, uh, terrible things that the government was doing in the client States and they, um, uh, highly dramatize terrible things that the government did in this, in the state that they don't like. And yeah, I mean, it, it, that's all hallmark hallmarks of what's going on right now with Ukraine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's the same between thing. Between Ukraine and Russia. Like, yeah. the real difference between the elections in those two countries is probably not that great. Yeah. Um, and in fact, I would suggest that 
elections are probably freer in Russia than they are in Ukraine or the last ones were in Ukraine. Yeah. Maybe not. Um, yeah. but I don't think that there's a significant difference, but yeah. of course in Russia, the election is seen as illegitimate and the election in Ukraine is seen as legitimate. So, yeah. Uh, well, and reported that way. Well, yeah. And going back to just like the human interest stories, like, I mean, you watch the news, you get three or four human interest stories a, a night oh, yeah. in, in Ukraine. And hey, I'm not even saying that that's necessarily a bad thing because what's going on there is horrible. But there's a reason they're showing you those mm -hmm. and not stuff from Russia. Right. Like, they don't want you yeah, to they're sympathize. They're not talking about the things that are going on in the Donbass. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that never comes up. Those are Ukrainians, too. They yeah. just speak Russian. Exactly. But they're not the ones on the news every night. Right. Um, and there's a reason for that, because yeah. they don't want you to sympathize with those people. They want you to sympathize with the Ukrainians. Like, yeah. it's a it's a tactic. Um, okay. And I do... All right. So we're, we're going to cut this down to two clips. Okay. <laughs> um, so let's play this one first. All right. I'm ready. During that campaign, the big issue was about inspector generals would protect taxpayers' dollars who were sidelined. They were fired. Many people said, we don't need them. And fraud became rampant. Last year, I told you the watchdogs are back. Since then, since then, we've recovered billions of taxpayers' dollars. Now let's triple the anti-fraud strike force going after these criminals, double the statute of limitations on these crimes, and crack down on identity fraud by criminal syndicates stealing billions of dollars, billions of dollars from the American people. Okay, he's talking about the fraud and the, like, the PPP loans and things like that um, is yeah. what he's going after. A uh, couple of things that I want to point out about that. I mean, they're going after the, the billions of dollars in taxpayer money that these criminals have stolen after the government stole it. <laughs> you can't steal the money I stole first. Yeah. <laughs> Taxation is exactly. <laughs> and, and these billions of dollars in taxpayer money that they've recovered, it's yeah. not going back to the taxpayer. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'm not getting any money back. No. Um, so I, I just <laughs> had to point that out. Taxation is theft. Yeah. yeah. Don't steal the money I already stole. <laughs> yeah. Only the government is allowed we, to steal your money. We stole that first. <laughs> only, the, only the government can legally steal your money. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the last bit, and this is one of those things that just sickens me, is when he starts talking about the police and the talk. Yeah. So here's play the, Biden. Play the clip. <laughs> I've never had to have the talk, the talk that brown and black parents have had to have with their children. Bo, Hunter, Ashley, my children. I never had to have the talk with them. I never had to tell them if a police officer pulls you over, turn your interior lights on right away. Don't reach for your license. Keep your hands on the steering wheel. That this one, this one irritates me. Yeah. Uh, because like this one hits home for me. I mean, you you have family in law enforcement, mm -hmm. but this the reason this one bothers me so much is because like I mean I did have that talk with my kids. Like that is something like that. The everything he lined out like that's what you do. Like you have to know how to behave in front of law enforcement. Like yeah. I mean don't. You know, I mean, we were joking earlier, like my parents told me, don't be an idiot in front of a cop. Like, I mean, that was more or less the talk I got as a kid. But I actually did give my oldest daughter when she started driving, like the legitimate, like this is how you act during a during a traffic stop. Yeah. Like this is this is what you do. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'd like to ask him what talk he did give with his kids when they started driving, because I guarantee you I know what it was. Uh, it was, yeah. When you show them your license, give them the wink. <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. I'm a Biden. Like that's, that's the talk he gave them because he did give them a talk like that. Yeah. Or if they didn't already just know, like, well, I, I'm white and I come from a law enforcement family and I got that talk. Yeah. I, I mean, like I got the talk of how you act to, to put the officer at ease yeah. when you get pulled over. Yeah. Um, and so I, I, I hate that they keep racializing this stuff. Yeah. Like Biden didn't have to have that talk with his kids, not because, all right, this isn't about being black or white or whatever. It's not just black and brown people that, that have to have this talk. Everybody has to have this talk. The reason that he didn't have to have that talk is because he is a U.S. Senator. Yeah, exactly. 
is because if you're a political elite, yeah, then you don't have to have that talk. Yeah. But all the rest of the people in the United States have to have that talk. Oh, absolutely. And this is an issue. This isn't, and we've said, I've talked about it on the podcast before. It's just one that really burns me up is, but this isn't a racial issue. This mm-hmm. is a law enforcement issue and it is a legitimate one. Like it's, yeah. I'm not saying this is a, it, like a, this is an issue. We have a policing problem in this country. Mm-hmm. It's just not race related. Yeah. It's a policing issue and we're never going to get it resolved by making it a racial issue. Yeah. And part of it is a community issue too. Um, I, I do think that, uh, that, you know, the, the community police officer idea is officer just long friendly. gone. Yeah. It's yeah. just long gone. Um, the, the police are now not taught to protect and serve, at least it's, not us, yeah. um, you know, protect and serve the, the government. Yeah. I, I mean, that's really, I guess what it is about now. Um, but they're, they, they come in as enforcers now instead of, people that are trying to solve problems. I yeah. don't think that that was always the case. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of, and I know you were talking, um, or maybe did it not come up? Uh, there was some talk briefly last podcast about the, some of the policing reforms that they were proposing. Yeah, right? We were talking about that on the um, last podcast. Okay. Yeah. It's been so long. <laughs> uh, it's been a minute. <laughs> yeah. uh, a couple of weeks ago. I can't remember what happened yesterday. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, they're, there was something specific about that, though. Um, ah, now I'm trying to think. Okay. Um, in terms of how, you know, how they a- address issues or um, how they interact with people generally or... Well, I mean, my thing's been this whole time is that... You're talking about police officers in general? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't... I, I'm not sure. <laughs> I was thinking more just like the the reason we can't get any reform or get anything moving is because it's made oh, such a racial issue. I remember it was about the qualified immunity issue. Oh yeah, um, a lot of complaints about you know uh, there's a I I have heard yeah. um, that there are a lot of police officers that say if they end qualified immunity they'll quit. Yeah, I say good riddance. That's exactly my response. Like because if, if, if you they need to need be it, so protected. Yeah. For anything that you do out there, then because, that's probably stuff you shouldn't be doing. Exactly, um, that's the way I see it. This country survived. There, there was a time when a police officer didn't stand out above the people. That the police officers didn't have more rights than the people did. Yeah. Um, that that you would be defended by the courts. Uh, in like a, a normal citizen would be defended by the courts against a police officer in case of an unlawful arrest or something like that. Yeah. It's not the case anymore. I yeah. mean, it happens from time to time, but it's the, it's, it's not, yeah, the it's norm. like the exception yeah. that proves the rule now. Though. Exactly. It's, it, um, it's, it's so unusual for the legal system to take the side of a civilian against the police officer. Yeah. And, um, and the, Part of the problem with policing is because they have been elevated above a normal citizen in terms of what they're permitted to do. Yep. And they should be held accountable just like everybody else. Absolutely. A law enforcement officer is not supposed to have any more rights than anybody else. Yeah. Nobody, exactly. like, that. that's the whole idea of equal protection under the law. Yeah, right. <laughs> so. So, anyway. Um, I, I, yeah, I was just really irritated by that. Like it, this is not a racial issue. This is not a black and brown thing. It's not because you're white that you didn't have to have this talk with your kids, Biden. It's because you were a political elite. Exactly. Exactly. Um, all right. That really covers that. That's all I, I, I don't, yeah. I don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> yeah. I mean the state of the, like, so I listened to the whole, I, I actually listened to it live just because. Like if something crazy had came out, I wanted to be the one to see it live. Like if Biden, because yeah. it's Biden. Like you never know what's what he's gonna say or what kind of like it could be a train wreck, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I wanted to get to see that. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I mean these things, the State of the Union just seems so silly to me because mm-hmm. he didn't really talk about the State of the Union at all. He just talked about you know. It was how, a stump speech. Yeah. It was a campaign speech. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
he didn't truly address like the the real problems or where we're at. Yeah. But, and, and what happened to those real time fact checkers that were always running while Trump was up there about oh, uh, yeah. you know <laughs> pointing out the false or misleading statements like this yeah. this was an exercise in false and misleading statements. It's, yeah. Uh I I kind of there's there's going to be a time when we do this show live over a State of the Union oh, at that'll some be point. Fun. <laughs> and we just like, because I could have debunked half of what he said yeah. on the fly without In real looking time. up anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fact oh. check on the fly. Uh, it was it was kind of incredible. And it, I mean, but I, I'll, he he didn't screw up. I mean, there were some mumbles. No, he got, he got through it. Like, I mean... In true Biden fashion, like it wasn't <laughs> wasn't extraordinary, it wasn't entertaining, but it, he got through it. Like, wasn't so compelling. Words is a Biden. <laughs> um, yep. Okay, so just like a couple of things on the balloons. Wait, balloons or UFOs? Because right. e- everything I'm seeing right now is saying they're UFOs, man. I don't know. Like, uh, in the strictest <laughs> definition, unidentified flying object. Yeah. That looks an awful lot like a balloon. <laughs> well, there you go. Still though. <laughs> Moves like a balloon. Yeah. Pops like a balloon. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm kind of not surprised that there's been like a rash of these things. I assumed that after um, the first uh, weather balloon <laughs> w- was discovered that they would tweak their um, rag- radar algorithms to identify To start looking stuff. for these things. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And they have. And uh, so, like, one of the things that was shot down over Alaska um, is almost certainly a uh, a National Weather Service weather balloon that malfunctioned. Yeah. Um, I heard reports that one of the other, uh, one of the balloons that they shot down over Canada was um, uh, one of these, uh, what are they, are they low frequency? Like the ham radio repeater kind of thing? Uh, really? Balloon? Yeah. yeah. I hadn't heard uh, that. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. It's just... This is kind of ridiculous. And but here's the one of the things that really there all right, there's two things about this that really bother me. One is that if you don't know what it is, yeah. Why are you shooting it down? <laughs> yeah. If cuz it's I mean, in the it way should, of air traffic, Michael. Well, should, you don't understand. We have planes that fly at this level and you, we don't you want can, them to run into a balloon. Could start an interstellar <laughs> war this way. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> and that's Okay, so that's one of the funniest things about this. Like the idea that um, that a technology capable of flying from star to star, yeah, can be taken down by an F twenty two. Right. I think they're beyond uh, that. Yeah, you think? <laughs> <laughs> Whoever is is traveling through interstellar distances, yeah. probably not bothered by an F twenty two. You don't think so? I don't, I don't think so. I, it's a it's an impressive fighter. <laughs> it, yeah. it really is. Yeah. But. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking there's a technology gap there <laughs> that yeah, but can't that, that, be easily overcome. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. Um, now, but that's the other thing that that bugs me about this is that they're uh, okay. So they're sending up F-22 Raptors. It's like the most expensive aircraft ever, except for maybe the F-35. Yeah. Most expensive aircraft that works ever. <laughs> there you go. That's I was fixing to say. I was yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's rude. F thirty fives work just not well. Not great. <laughs> um, it work. They work so well that we uh, sell them to our allies, and we do not sell the F twenty two. There you go. <laughs> um, but anyway, they're they're using AIM nine X Sidewinder missiles to shoot these things down. Yeah. One AIM nine X Sidewinder. Yeah. At least not based on public records, yeah. costs about four hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, to shoot down a balloon. <laughs> right. <laughs> you, um, you would think now, they could just like shoot the pin at it or something. Yeah, <laughs> uh, fueling and sending up an F twenty two plus the maintenance and all the support staff. Like I, I, I bet this. I saw I, I saw some numbers recently. Have cost us billions of dollars. Oh, they have. Like I saw some numbers. I don't remember the specifics, but it was up there on what we've spent dealing with these balloons the past couple of weeks. Yeah. So unreal. And like all this talk about that the uh, oh well you know there's all this electronic equipment on the balloon that was shot down off the coast of the Carolinas. Yeah. Um the the Chinese spy balloon. Yeah. What do people think is on a weather balloon? Yeah, right. it, it's just a balloon that's in the air you put yeah, it in there it and you watch it along. float along yeah i don't know 
Um, there is uh, advanced um, equipment, electronic equipment on weather balloons. That's what they are. <laughs> That's what they do. That's literally <laughs> like their they, job. It's, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, I don't know. Like, oh my God, it was sending a signal. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's, that's what they do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm just yeah. it is it's comical that the most powerful military on earth is terrified of these blades. <laughs> is shooting them down in droves all of a sudden. I just think it's hilarious. Yeah. Well, so. I, I would like to say, like, there's a reason we save this story for the end of the podcast, because this story is the one that's distracting everybody. From the first story. Yeah. That's a real story, by the way. Like yeah. the first thing we talked about is important and you're not hearing anything about it on mainstream news, but you're hearing a lot about unidentified flying objects yeah. and balloons all of a sudden. And I'm telling you, there's a reason for that. But you're not hearing much about pipelines. Exactly. And, you know, we, I, I'm pretty sure that we postulated at the beginning of all of the Ukraine stuff that that might be what this war was all about. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, we did. Gas supplies to Europe or energy supplies to Europe. Absolutely. Absolutely. (laughs) Anyway, um, I the balloon thing is just hilarious to me. Uh, I do want to point out like one thing real quick, and we we may address this in greater detail in the future. Uh, I was so John Stossel did an interview with Mike Pompeo. Oh, really? And uh, like a long form interview, like an hour. Oh, cool. Um, I I haven't watched the whole thing yet, which is why maybe we spend Should some time with it. this on the, on the future, but, yeah. um, it, it had, and I, and actually what I've listened to, I wasn't always paying, like really Full paying attention. attention to, Yeah, but, um, uh, it, it's the kind of thing that like, I would like to hear, um, a, uh, Spike Cohen or a Dave Smith or, uh, you know, like a libertarian that's thinking about running for president respond to some of the statements that are made in this interview. Okay. Um, because Mike Pompeo is a, like a pretty conservative Republican, or at least as Republicans go these days. Yeah. Um, but he's not an idiot. Yeah. Like he's he's, he's an a intelligent guy. guy. Yeah. And uh, and I think that it would be better to prepare to try and deal with somebody like him because he probably will run for president in twenty twenty four. I yeah. think he will. Okay. Uh, I don't know how far he'll make it. Yeah. Um. I would bet that he would be the establishment candidate, certainly over DeSantis or Trump. Yeah. But that doesn't mean he's going to get very far. <laughs> no, it's true. But establishment ain't what it used to be. Yeah, we keep proving that. Although, yeah. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. But um, yeah. I think that it would be better to prepare to try and deal with somebody like him than somebody like Trump. So, do I mean, so I haven't heard this interview. I mean, does he make some good point? Does he, does he, put us in a position like as libertarians like does he kind of is he a formidable opponent i think that he would be a formidable opponent just because he he does um he he has strong convictions and he's thought about it and he he understands policy and he has a a long history in government and intelligence yeah um i think that he's wrong i I, yeah you know and and I'll tell you, Do you like, think somebody that would be considering running for like one of our people could put up a fight against. Him? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But you'd have to know what you were walking into. I think. Yeah. Like if you expected it to be like a dealing with a, a Marco Rubio or a Donald Trump or something like that, then you might be surprised. Yeah. Is is what I'm saying. Okay. Um, I'm gonna have to listen. I want to listen <clears throat> to this now. Like, you, you, now I, I will so say that like on a lot of foreign <laughs> policy stuff, yeah. he kind of because Stossel gives him some pushback. I'm sure. And, and Stossel's a good interviewer in that he he doesn't just accept things at face value, but he also doesn't push too hard. Yeah, yeah. To like he kind of walks that line. Yeah, yeah. He he yeah. doesn't become antagonistic. He yeah. Uh, he comes off as just like curious, but he'll let it go quicker than like I would. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. right. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So there were, you know, there were things like they're talking about some foreign policy stuff and, um, you know, Pompeo makes his, uh, statement in favor of empire. And, um, Stossel says, well, there's some that would say that our, uh, our interventions in this place are making the world less safe rather than more safe and less peaceful rather than more peaceful and, or, you know, something like that. Yeah. And, um, and, and one of these kind of fallback responses that Pompeo had, which bugs me, 
is, uh, well, I know things that you don't know. <laughs> okay. Because, you know, yeah. he's an intelligence guy. Yeah. I know things that you don't know. I promise you it's important that we deal with these things. And and I Well, so, and, but the the like the simple retort to that though would be, well, okay, but you still can't tell me that that stuff isn't caused by what we're doing. Like you may know stuff I don't know. Yeah. But I guarantee you what you know that I don't know is it still goes back to if we weren't doing these things in the first place, we wouldn't be having these problems. Yeah, that's almost certainly true. So my thing is that, like, okay, you're doing these things in my name and with my money. And I don't um, know about Yeah, And so at some point, like, if this were a normal relationship, if this was a business, if I was investing in a business, and kind of yeah. I am, right? Like, I yeah. except that I don't have any choice. Yeah. <laughs> but if I were an investor in a business... And I was approaching the business and saying, hey, you know, I keep giving you my money, but things seem to keep getting worse. And um, and I, I don't know. I think that you're doing this wrong. And they said, well, I mean, we know things that you don't know. Yeah. Like that might fly once or twice. But at some point I'd be like, look, if you want to keep getting my money, yeah, <laughs> you better start sharing yeah, like some I of this mean, information. At, at some point, this stuff doesn't have to be classified. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and I I feel like the same response is appropriate here. Like, okay, um, you're using my money to do things that you say are in my best interest, but what I see doesn't seem to be in my best interest. It's not being bared out. And yeah. when I challenge you about it, you say, "Well, you know things that I don't." Sometime you've got to show your hand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me what it is that I don't know that changes my perspective on this. Yeah. And and in this in in the case of the empire, it's I like I say, I, I stand by what I said originally. Like mm-hmm. the stuff that he knows that we don't know is still all caused from the building of the empire. Yeah. Like you don't build the empire, you don't have the problems. <laughs> like I mean it's just, almost certainly true. It's pretty basic. Like and, and there's like some immigration stuff that I'd like to address and so forth. So I think uh, I'll do like a real listen of this interview. Yeah. I'll and have to give you the opportunity to listen to it too. Yeah. And, and maybe we can address some of these things. No, that sounds like fun. Um, because it was kind of interesting. Like I don't like Pompeo very much. Um, and I certainly disagree with him, but um, he does make some points that deserve a real response. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, cool. And so we can, we can wrap there. I think. Uh, <laughs> yeah. although man, like now I want to talk about his immigration thing, but not, not now. <laughs> now is not the time. Some other time. Ah, okay. Um, yeah. I'm, yeah, we, t- me and you I'm honestly, get I'm real... tired of sitting up anyway. <laughs> like I, I, uh, anyway. Um, so, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll wrap there. Uh, sorry about missing a week, everybody. I, it couldn't be helped. Um, and then I, next week's no better. Oh, right. You're out of town. I, I leave to go out of town. Tomorrow. Um, yeah. So Gary's out of town. Um, you're back. You're back Saturday. Saturday, kinda. Yeah, we're driving back Saturday. Okay, you working the next day? Working the next day. Damn. I mean, all right. It's pot- We could potentially maybe do that that Sunday, but it, mm-hmm. I, it's one of those things I just can't make any promises because yeah. I don't know when I'm coming. We back can do to. it midnight Saturday. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Um, well, we'll we'll try and get a podcast. Uh, you know, I'll try and coordinate with uh, with Liberty Larry. And- and mm-hmm. do one together. And if it just can't be done, then I need to know as soon as possible. And then yeah. I'll try and get something out on my own. Yeah. Okay. Um, something short probably, but something. Yeah. Yeah. We need something. All right. Um, especially after missing a week. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, all right. So uh, we'll, we'll figure it out for next week. Um, there will almost certainly be something, but uh, plan on the week after. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. It'll be a little later. Like I say, in the yeah, week, yeah. I guess. Um, maybe, so. yeah, may, maybe we'll get two, like one early and one later. That'd be cool. In the next yeah, week Yeah, if we something. can hit like a Sunday and a Thursday, yeah, that'd try be and, good. Try and make up for a missed one. Do a double dip. And then another missed one with a, <laughs> I, I, we'll see. Yeah, we'll come up with something. <laughs> It'll um, be good. So uh, we'll be back when we're back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, in the meantime, you can, uh, you can follow us on Facebook you can like and subscribe on Podbean, uh, YouTube, and iTunes. Yep. Um, you can leave reviews. That's always appreciated. Uh, comments. Um, tell your friends and share and all that other stuff. 
that helps us out. We really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, we'll be back next Soon. time. <laughs> <laughs> next time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> when, when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life's short, live free. Ciao. Later.